if you look at all you are equipped with a great knowledge great expertise but if all the knowledge and expertise does not help the, our fellow human beings or humanity the purpose would be lost if you look at israel with the one river jordan with all the difficulties the terrain which is not convenient for agriculture and completely surrounded by so many hostile nations but they are able to do extreme innovation in the, in agriculture in military technology in it what not many things somehow it all depends on never run away from a conflict never run away from any kind of adversity especially never run away, run away from any kind of failure be damn confident if you go through failures face it go through it and break the pattern and achieve that so for me any kind of hardship any kind of hostile environment i take it as a challenge and never run away from any kind of defeat i never walk out from any kind of failure and learning is a continuous process and i know that today if i fail tomorrow i'm going to win it is not about it's not just about what i'm going through but right from my childhood this is what i told myself be a dreamer you don't lose anything at this age when you're in teens we are just in early 20s you will go through a lot of things you'll go through humiliation would i be successful you have many kind of doubts speculations but one thing be very clear no matter what you gonna achieve it all the failures every possible negative situation you can turn it into a positive manner and you can pave the path for success and it is about so many people every day do uh, what i do is i do a little bit every of everything i have a 5 year plan a 10 year plan a 20 year plan whether i achieve it or not i keep on pursuing i keep on doing that hard work i never run away from any kind of negative situation and also you have to have a very strong moral code of yours what is what are your rights and what are your wrongs what is your code of conduct legally you might be right but morally one could be wrong so it is about you try to have your own moral compass it is not don't try to i don't for example when i was doing my intermediate i had a chance to pass the exam by taking some slips and my friends were copying i was looking at it i would have passed but i thought would i feel good by the end of the day suddenly i remembered mohandas karamchand gandhi ji's life uh, life lesson when he tried to copy in a school and he said no to it so i took the example of gandhi ji and never copied i failed i didn't succeed but i failed i took that failure in a dignity rather than coming in a cutting in a shortcut way and achieving exam results good results i prefer to be a failure with honesty so that's what i believe because you have to have a very strong moral compass so what are what are your moral guidelines what would be you would be planning to achieve in which way don't have any kind of shortcuts in life shortcuts might be giving you an edge for a time being eventually you would you would get caught up with your wrongs so i advise you i request you don't cut short don't try to take shortcuts in life face the hardships face the difficulties and you would be a better person society has so many intellectual so many capable people and you know about the first father of nuclear bomb oppenheimer technology and innovation should have a human face we should have empathy and oppenheimer after blasting the first nuclear bomb 
He said, we have unleashed death. I have become the death merchant. And that kind of technology would, will never make us happy. It is about a simple invention, a simple app which would better lives. For example, In recent times, we know about Steve Jobs. He's the greatest modern-day innovator. His Apple is one of the most valuable companies on the planet with a line of products from Apple laptops to iPods and iPhones. Apple products are tech-savvy, classy and comes with great features. If you had iPhone 13 last year, this year you had to buy the next phone, and next year and so on. But the key question to ask is, how many Indians can afford the latest iPhone? How many people in the world can afford iPhone? Not even 5% of the world can afford I Apple products. But thousands of techies in global giant like Apple spend 90% of its <coughs> R&D and time for that niche 2-3% to of world population. <coughs> But what I would prefer is, I'll never say Steve Jobs kind of entrepreneurs are not needed, but they're, they're needed. But I would like to share one more story of how many of you would, would be knowing this story. It's Dr. Dilip Mahalanibis during the 1971 Liberation War. <coughs> Over 10 million people from nearby areas of present-day Bangladesh entered into India as refugees. A massive cholera epidemic started in the refugee camps. There were hardly any medicines or trained staff or doctors. Dr. Dilip Mahalanibis deployed the ORS, uh, ORS therapy, which is known as oral rehydration solution, even before it was given approval by the authorities. Even though the doctor took the flak, this, time, this timely intervention saved millions of people and thanks to his ORS therapy. It saved 5 crores lives globally. Today, all the 190 plus countries use ORS. The Lancet Journal called the ORS therapy as the greatest discovery of 20th century, he, but he never patented. That's what I'm trying to say. His brilliance, his intelligence, intelligence his intellectual prowess, he never paid, in spite of having everything, but he never patented this, his therapy and did not exploit it for a commercial purpose. At the age of 87 years, the great human being passed away last year and was awarded the Padma Bhushan by the government of India. Even today, 24 by 7, 365 days, his innovation saves millions of people all over the world. So my advice is to all the graduates, going to be graduates, here is to think about ideas and innovation that are simple, successful, sustainable, scalable, and work on tech that improves social mobility and reduces inequalities. So admire and adore Steve Jobs, but find your own Dilip Mahalanibis in you. Besides all the jars, gloss, and shiny glitz, what's more important is not the tech, but the impact which is going to cause to, the, to your fellow human beings. And you think about Nikola Tesla. He had 300 MP uh, innovations, inventions, but he never patented. He gave all his patent rights. And he believes that it should belongs, it belongs to the world. And look at, I look at very heroes, not from on silver screen. Don't look at me and don't adore me, but adore the people who made you to come here. A teacher in a school, a teacher in a college, a professor who taught you something. Maybe heroes are good to be entertained. Even including me, I'm saying, I'm okay to be entertained. But don't, you have to take, you have to look at the heroes who are beside, around you. Maybe from your parents' side. That's what I believe in. In Telugu, one of the... <coughs> Maybe students from the rest of India. 
might find it interesting and why people are shouting when I'm drinking water. Maybe they love me, that's why.